I thought it was really interesting that you had the idea of, of different rhythms and that the idea of the project wasn't about Parkinson's directly. It was more about tolerance of people's differences. And, um, and that was a, a more comprehensive look at disability and, um, and an interesting one. Um, so that intrigued me. Well, I think one of the things is that Parkinson's is a disease you wear. And so when you go out in public, you're exposed, you're naked. <laughs> and um, it's not like dyslexia or some other kind of dis or even having an illness that people can't tell. You know, we, this is what you got. We're, this is who we are. And so taking everyday situations and placing us in them, which is what the, part of the concept is of this, makes total sense to me. Um, because that's one of the things we have to deal with every day is how people respond to us. Sometimes people think we're drunk because of the way we walk. Or sometimes people think, I'll see a mother pull her child closer to her as I walk by because if my walk isn't normal, she so think I'm a crazy person or there's a fear factor. So um, I think having a setting of everyday circumstances, everyday places, is a good idea. The objective became to um, have people sync up with a Parkinson's tempo so that if people move slowly together there is the idea of, of empathy, of feeling what's that like to move that way or let me move with you, let's duet, let's partner. So there isn't judgment so much as there is a understanding of what that feels like. Well, um, pe people with PD often have problems with crowds. It's a situation that produces anxiety along with a, a situation that has a time pressure to it. And so if you're in a bus trying to get a seat or if you're at a crosswalk waiting for the light to turn, not knowing whether you're going to be able to move at the time that you need to. Those are very classic PD moments um, where you're, you're concerned about, will I make it across the street before the light changes? Or can I find a seat on the bus? Um, sometimes when I'm riding the bus or the subway, uh, someone will offer me a seat. I don't know if it's because of my PD because I look old, because I'm carrying too many bags, or whether they're just a nice person. So you never really know necessarily why someone might uh, be generous toward you. But regardless of that, there are situations that cause us pressure and anxiety. And these are two ones that apply to us. And so that was one major reason why we thought of including them. Say, no, I don't need it. I'm fine. I'm independent. You know, don't treat me like I'm disabled. I didn't want to be separated or differentiated from people. But then I also began to understand that people want to help. And sometimes it's important for me to allow them to help, to allow them to participate, even if I don't need it. <laughs> sometimes I, I accept the help for them rather than for me. And, and, and trying to be sensitive to that because they want to be part of my situation. They care and they want to be involved. And sometimes I do need help. Uh, just when we were in, putting makeup together, uh, I was putting some sound wires into a little pouch I have. And my fingers just weren't working properly. And I asked the woman doing makeup, would you do this for me? And she gladly did it. And that was a situ situation where I asked for help. So that was slightly different. But um, you try to direct people in a way that would be most comfortable for you and also be sensitive to the fact, to what their needs are as well as your own.